Well, joining us to break this down is economic analyst and I-24 News host, Ariel Margulies. So, Ariel, you know, this report, I'm going to be honest with you, makes for a very, very grim reading. Definitely doesn't put a smile on your face. How many nations have seen a decrease in living standards and who has been the worst hit? You know, there's a phrase, uh, there's a saying that goes, it's a great time to be alive. Yeah. Now, this report makes you ask, uh, is, it is it now? Yeah. Um, it has uh, been uh, declining the Human Development Index and for the second year in a row, now there's a combination of factors that we'll talk about in a minute. But if you're asking about the number of countries, 80% of the 191 countries that were surveyed uh, saw a decline for the second year in a row in terms of their Human Development Index. and. As you mentioned, that is measuring the uh, uh, how long people live, basically, mm -hmm. life expectancy, education. How much money and, they make. And how much money they make per uh, person. So 80% okay. and the situation is worse. I can give you just two examples yeah. uh, for our viewers to understand what this means. India, for example, saw a decline in life expectancy of three years. And that's a country that endured a very, very long lockdown during COVID. Right. So three years, a sharp, yeah, a sharp, sharp decline in life expectancy. And the situation is even worse in sub-Saharan countries, uh, war-torn areas in, in Africa, for example, uh, mm -hmm. where a child that is born now uh, can expect to have only six years of education and to live just until the age of 60, while in OCD, OECD countries, for example, it would be 12 years of yeah. education and the average life expectancy is 79. So a gap of 20 years there with life expectancy and a gap of six years of school. So that, of course, brings me to the next question. What are the factors that are contributing the most to this? Obviously, we know that the war in Ukraine has had a big impact on, on global supply, uh, the cost of food, but that's not just it, right? It's not surprising, we have to say, mm -hmm. that this is the result after two years of pandemic. A war in Ukraine mm -hmm. that has really, really disturbed the, the supply of a lot of uh, grains and, and a lot of uh, produce from Eastern Europe to areas like uh, Sub-Saharan Africa and elsewhere where grains are, are needed for daily nutrition. It has also disrupted the supply of gas and oil from Russia to, to Europe, we mm -hmm. know. Uh, so that's one thing, of course. Yes, the war in Ukraine. The other thing is the pandemic. You know, the world is still in the stage where it's exiting two years of pandemic. 2021 was still a pandemic right. year. And hence, it makes sense that life expectancy dropped in many parts of the world. The third factor, and that I would say is the most disturbing mm -hmm. one, is one that's not going to pass because the war in Ukraine will end at some point, hopefully either this way or another. The pandemic hopefully is behind us, but climate change. Climate yeah. change is causing severe droughts and changes in livability across the world that people are paying the price for in terms of how long they live, how safe they are, what they can eat, and uh, how their lives are gonna look going forward. So that brings me, of course, to my last question here. You know, what does this mean for the future and is there any way to reverse this trend? Well, we can stop the war in Ukraine, that's for one. Yeah. Uh, and then climate change, I would say, is, is the greatest uh, factor uh, that, of course, humans everywhere in the world need to find and, and recruit all the necessary means that they can in order to, to combat better and try and reverse the wheel a little bit because we are seeing it. We're seeing the numbers. We're seeing how it impacts lives of people everywhere in the planet, white, black, gray, blue, yeah. whatever color they are. And that's something that people should unite over. Uh, one more thing to, to, to pay attention to is that, yes, the world is exiting a pandemic. Hopefully, the United Nations and governments worldwide are now better set in order to combat also a pandemic if another one breaks again. And again, that also ties into global warming and climate change. But these viruses will keep jumping from animals to people, mutations of them. And as well prepared as we are, it's better to be even better prepared yeah, in order to for combat sure. these situations. All right, Ariel. Well, thank you for joining us. A bit grim, of course.